Hey, it's Michelle, your CXC Biology Tutor. In this video, I'll be taking a close look at the lymphatic system, and I'll be giving you an overview of its structure and the formation of the lymph, and then also we're going to look at the functions of the lymphatic system. All right, so let's begin. So what exactly is the lymphatic system? So I like to think of it as the drainage and defense system of the body. So it consists of a network of vessels and glands that form a part of the circulatory system. So it's closely related to our circulatory system, which consists of the blood, the blood vessels, and the heart. So they all link up. The lymphatic system links up to the circulatory system. But it plays a major role in immunity, which is the defense against pathogens. So any invaders, any foreign invaders that enter the body, immunity is very important in controlling those pathogens, preventing them from attacking the body and making you sick. So the lymphatic system plays a very important role in immunity. So what does it consist of? So it consists of the lymph, which is the actual fluid part, and it is really the transport medium. So that clear fluid containing the lymphocytes, so you should have come across this term lymphocytes before, it means white blood cells. So you can see how lymphocytes closely relate to lymph. So this lymph carries lymphocytes, the white blood cells, which specifically produce antibodies. And it also carries protein, cell debris with bacteria and waste products. So the lymph is the fluid part, that's the transport medium. Now the transport medium, the fluid, is going to be traveling through the lymphatic vessels. So these are the tools that are going to be transporting the lymph. And they're pretty similar to the structure of veins. So they actually have valves to prevent backflow. And then thirdly, the lymphatic system consists of lymph glands or nodes. So sometimes they may be referred to as glands. Sometimes they may be referred to as nodes. They mean the same thing. So there are these small bean-shaped bulbs where the pathogens in the lymph are actually filtered. So it's really these lymph nodes that contain lots of white blood cells, lots of lymphocytes to help attack these pathogens to get rid of them. Okay, let's look at the structure of the lymphatic system and some of the important tissues that make up the lymphatic system. So the tonsils, the thymus gland, and the spleen, they are the key lymphoid organs or lymphoid tissues of the immune system. So if you look at the structure here, so we're seeing how the lymphatic system is made up. We have the tonsils. The tonsils are these two soft masses of lymphoid tissue that you would find in your throat. So they're the, like the first line of defense against any pathogens that may be inhaled or ingested. So when you breathe in and when you eat food, there's a likelihood that some pathogens could be in that air or the food that you're eating. So the tonsils are the first line of defense against any pathogens inhaled or ingested. So then if you go further down in the, the neck region, the upper part, the thymus gland, so this structure here, so it's closely situated to the thyroid gland. But this thymus gland, this thymus gland is responsible for maturing the lymphocytes that are produced in the bone marrow. So if you look here, the bone marrow is that, that tissue inside of the bones where blood cells are made. So you have lymphocytes and erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. They're all made in the bone marrow. So these lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow and they mature in the thymus gland. So moving on now to look at the lymph nodes. So I mentioned the lymph nodes, those are where you would find an accumulation of white blood cells that would attack pathogens during a, an infection. So the, th the lymph glands are like the filtering systems. Those are the filters for pathogens and also cancer cells. So the lymph nodes are very, very important. And then the spleen, we don't hear too much about the spleen, but it's very important because it, it plays a, a role it acts as a blood filter. So it removes any old red blood cells and then it will store new red blood cells. So it acts as a storage for red blood cells. So that is the spleen. So all of these make up the lymphatic system. These are the main tissues or organs that make up the lymphatic system. 
So as I said before, the lymphatic system is mainly concerned with drainage and defense. So it is really part of the immune system. All right, so in this slide here, we're looking at the major lymph nodes that you'll find in your body. So remember, the lymph nodes are the sites where the blood is filtered. So you have a lot of lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells that produce antibodies. So they're going to be attacking any pathogens found in the lymph. So we have the major lymph nodes here. You find some in the neck, the armpit, the intestinal walls, and the groin. So therefore, when you are sick, when you have some infection, normally your lymph nodes swell up because of the increase in the white blood cells. So when you feel swellings in your neck, in your armpit, and your groins, that is an indication of infection because the white blood cells are gonna be multiplying and accumulating in these lymph nodes. So that is usually a symptom, a sign of infection when you have swollen lymph nodes. All right, so let's look at exactly how lymph is formed. So that's what we're going to look at on this slide, the formation of lymph and the function of the lymphatic system. So I have here a title from plasma to tissue fluid to lymph because lymph does, doesn't form automatically on its own. So it really begins with the plasma. So the plasma is actually that pale straw colored or yellow liquid portion of blood. So it actually makes up 55% of blood and it provides the fluid medium for blood cells. So when we talk about blood, we would mention plasma along with the blood cells. You have the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets. So the plasma makes up the largest proportion, the largest portion of the blood. So it mostly consists of water with dissolved nutrients, such as proteins, the clotting factors, electrolytes. So electrolytes are like the different ions that are dissolved in the, the plasma, calcium ions, sodium, potassium, all of those are considered electrolytes. So it consists of, the plasma is made up of these nutrients and also waste that needs to be removed from tissues. So the waste would include carbon dioxide. So the main function of plasma is really to transport nutrients and waste in the blood. So from plasma now, we go to interstitial or tissue fluid. So I'm just going to outline each of these parts, and then we're going to go over to look at this diagram here, the capillary bed, to show you exactly how we go from plasma to tissue fluid to lymph. So the tissue fluid is actually going to be leaked plasma from capillaries because capillaries they're small thin thin walled blood vessels but they have these small gaps these tiny gaps where the plasma in the blood can actually leak out of the capillaries so once that plasma leaks from the capillaries it is actually known as tissue fluid so this tissue fluid is going to surround and bathe the cells in our tissue spaces so the true function of the tissue fluid is to provide cells with nutrients and removes waste. So the tissue fluid surrounds all of our cells, therefore providing those cells with nutrients and removing any waste that the cells would have produced. So from the tissue fluid now, once that tissue fluid is drained into lymph capillaries, it is then known as lymph. So lymph is pretty much drained tissue fluid, excess tissue fluid. So when we have the drainage of the tissue fluid into the lymph capillaries and collected in the larger lymphatic vessels, then they can be transported back to the circulatory system. So let's look at this diagram here. So we're looking at the capillary bed. So you're seeing a lot of cells that make up the tissue. And you're seeing the capillaries. And you have the arteriole. The arteriole is a small artery. So the blood going through the arteriole is going to be under high pressure. So this is blood that usually is coming from the heart. So that high pressured blood now is going to flow through the capillaries. And remember, this blood is going to be carrying all the nutrients that needs to be deposited into the cells of the tissues. So the blood transports is, transport, is transported through the, the capillary. So uh, as I said before, the capillary has tiny gaps. So the plasma in the blood 
leak salt into the, the cells, the cells that make up the tissue. So once that plasma or in the blood leaks out into the tissues and bathes the cells is known as tissue fluid. So that's what you're seeing here. So the tissue fluid is what is surrounding all these various cells of the tissue. And then once the tissue fluid offloads nutrients, deposits it to the cells, then the excess tissue fluid ends up draining into the lymphatic capillaries, the lymph capillaries, and then into the lymphatic vessels. So we're seeing here, this white structure here is representing the lymphatic vessels. So when, once all the nutrients have been deposited, transported into the cells, any excess fluid remaining behind needs to drain back in to the lymphatic vessels. So then that lymphatic vessels is going to take it, take the lymph. So this is the point when the fluid is called lymph. As, so, as soon as it gets into the lymphatic vessels, that is when it's known as lymph and it will be transported in the lymphatic vessels throughout the body. So it's going to pass up to, it's going to pass and meet up with the lymph nodes where filtration is going to occur. So remember the lymph nodes contain the white blood cells that are going to get rid of any pathogens present in the lymph. So therefore on the other side now of this, this capillary bed, so the blood carrying the plasma is now going to be transported through the venules. So the, the, it's going to be under lower pressure now because the blood flowing through the venules and then linking up to the veins is going to be under less pressure. So remember, veins have valves to prevent backflow. So because the blood is so low pressured, it's more likely to experience backflow. So the veins are going to have those valves to prevent backflow. So this blood then will then return to the heart again and is usually going to be lacking the nutrients, lacking the oxygen, so it returns to the heart where the heart will pump that blood to the lungs to pick up the oxygen again. So this is the capillary bed and this is how lymph is formed. So we go from plasma in the blood to tissue fluid bathing the tissues, the cells of the tissues, and then once that tissue fluid releases its nutrients, the that fluid will drain back into the drain into the lymphatic vessels, and then it is known as lymph. So, what are the functions of the lymphatic system? So, I have four main functions listed here. So, it includes collecting and transporting the excess tissue fluid, as I just mentioned when it was describing how the lymph is formed. So that excess tissue fluid becomes lymph, gets into the lymphatic vessels. And then the other function is to get rid of waste and filters pathogens in the lymph nodes. So th that lymph travels to the lymph nodes and is filtered, gets rid of the pathogens, gets rid of any waste. And thirdly, the lymphatic system is responsible for returning filtered fluid to the blood circulatory system. So once that lymph has been filtered, gotten rid of all the pathogens, it returns to the circulatory system in the body. So remember the circulatory system contains the blood, the blood vessels, the heart. So that filtered fluid, filtered lymph, is going to return to the blood circulatory system. So then it pretty much becomes plasma once again. And then the fourth function, this is more related to the digestive function and transporting of fats from the digestive system. So if you, if you recall, the villi have special lymphatic vessels called lacteals. So they're responsible for transporting fats from the digestive system. So that is the overview of the lymphatic system and its main functions. So hopefully that has been a help and you have a better understanding of the purpose of the lymphatic system and how it works.